see you. Oh, it's a fine scent. <laughs> good to go. Going good. No, no problem at all. Just a little disagreement. I'd like to hear that from the lady if I could, sir. No, really. It's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but there's no trouble. Karen, I'm sorry. We can work this out, I swear it. Please? You okay? Thank you, officer. Look, if you need to call somebody, uh, a cab or a friend, I got a phone in my car. No, really. Everything's fine. It'll work out. Well, if it doesn't work out, you don't need to take the abuse, all right? Just get on the phone. See, sometimes there is a cop around when you need one. And call any time, uh, home and office. Thank you, Sergeant Lorenzo. What's your name? It's Karen Daniels. And thank you. Lorenzo. Sergeant Lorenzo, it's Karen Daniels. Karen, what's up? You said if I need help, you said I could call you. I have to tell someone. Look, Karen, where are you? Wait. Karen? Karen? Okay. Look, why don't you come by the office tomorrow, say, uh, around 10 a.m.? No, no, I can't wait. Please, you've got to come now. Okay, Karen, uh, just calm down. Tell me where you are. 
The Hotel Excelsior is what's euphemistically called a residence hotel. It's a good example of the decay that takes over when the money moves on and a good argument for urban renewal. What it really is, is one step away from sleeping in the street. And in the middle of the night, it can seem like the end of the earth. Karen? Sergeant Lorenzo? How you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. I'm, I'm cool. You should see the other guy. You did. <laughs> so how does it look, Vicky? It was through and through. Bullet passed under the muscle wall, but it didn't hit any bone. If it had, we could be looking at a very different picture. You're one lucky cop, Lorenzo. Oh, we'll get to the hospital and draw you some big-time painkiller. You may feel all right now, but believe me, honey, that's going to be sore. Thanks, Vic. I'll be right back. OK. It's a preliminary here. Well, we got an ID on the shooter. His name is Jack Moran. He's a local hired gun. Strictly street-level talent, but his reputation says that he is not a guy that tends to miss. He didn't miss. I just didn't miss a little better than him. You have a history with this guy? Oh. Never heard of him, Lieutenant. Then why is he trying to turn after your lights? I don't know. I wish I hadn't shot him so I could beat the crap out of him and find that out, Lieutenant. Thanks. Chris, what were you doing here in the middle of the night? I mean, you have no backup, no calls to anybody, Chris? Look, I'm telling you, man, it was no big deal. Well, I think it's a very big deal. Look, early this morning, I'm driving home on Beach Boulevard, OK? I see a couple having a problem. I stop. We talk about it. They calm down. I gave the lady my card. They drive away. So did you get a description of a car, tag number? It's in my coat pocket. These people have names? Karen Daniels. I didn't get the guy's name. Anyway, this Karen Daniel calls me two times this morning. The first time she called, she was too scared, so she hung up. But the second time, she calls. She tells me to meet her here. Come on, Lieutenant, it was just an address. I didn't know it was such a fancy place. She sounded like she was scared. And that was it? Yeah, that was it. It seemed like nothing serious. She just seemed like a good-looking lady that was afraid of her boyfriend, and the boyfriend, he didn't seem that dangerous. So you have no idea who might have hired Moran or why the girl set you up? None. And believe me, I wish I did. Get yourself sewed up. We'll pick this up later. Thanks. Here, let me help you out. Uh, thanks. Sure. Yeah, I like this. What? You mean what? Come on, tuck it in. Don't push your luck, Sam. Oh, man. <clears throat> well, where are you going to be, Lorenzo? I guess you'll be taking some time. Like you care, Galbraith. You shot and killed a citizen, cowboy. And I'm on the shoot and review board. Don't you think internal affairs can at least wait until he gets stitched up, Rudy? That would be nice. Hate to break this up. Come on. Let go. Here. See you, Galbraith. Listen, I'll, uh, I'll run the plates for you, all right? What plates? So uh, I'll meet you back at your house? No, I'm going to be in. Chris, Vicky, would you at least try to talk some sense into him? Like he would listen. I know. What plates? Oh, nothing, Rudy. It's just a uh, little routine traffic violation, nothing you care about. Couldn't be helped. It's just one of those random things that happens. Now we're involved with killing a cop. We? I have to clean up your mess. I wanted to take care of Karen earlier, remember? A problem left unsolved turns into an even bigger problem. Here's the balance of Moran's fee. Can we trust him? 
He's worked with us before. He's reliable, and he's good. Okay. I'll take it to him. Do you have time for this? Well, the room's already paid for. No sense letting it go to waste. Oh, I'm not being harder on Lorenzo than I would on anyone else. I just want the truth. So talk to Chris, detective. I wasn't there when it happened. Cop talks to his partner. It's important that Lorenzo understand that he should come forward. It's the best thing he can do. You should talk to him. You have to believe that. It's better for him. Well, I'm sure Chris will help you all he can. He should come forward too, Rita. With what, Rudy? You know of something illegal? An illegal thing going on and you don't come forward. The prosecution calls that a felony. You should tell me what you know. It's better for you. What exactly would you like me to tell you, detective? Help me out a little bit here. Loran was a known felon. What did Lorenzo have to do with him? Why were the two of them huddled up in that rat hole? What did someone pay Lorenzo to whack the guy? Whack? No, the guy tried to whack me. What's he talking about? Chris, don't worry about it. There is no way that he can build a case for that. Just the idea that I was in business with Moran, it's a crock. Yeah, I could shoot your reputation right down the tubes. Which means I gotta find out why I was set up and who did it. Chris, you're staying home. Oh, come on, look. I got some industrial strength painkillers from the hospital. Not 100%, but I'm cool. Yeah, you should still be in the hospital. You know that, don't you? Yeah, they want me to spend the night, but I couldn't do it. I feel fine. Look, you go on. I gotta change, I'll be in soon. Go on. All right, I'll see you later. Good morning. Hi. Lieutenant Lou Hudson, Detective Sergeant Rita Lance. This is Jennifer Coulson of WPKV Television. Hello. Hi. Hello, I uh, heard about Lorenzo. How's he doing? He's, uh, he's all right, George. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Good. Now then, Jennifer wants to do a piece on the department. It would be good for public image and a morale boost for the troops. We ran it by the deputy chief, and he agrees it's a good idea. Oh, he does, huh? And he left it to you to tell me. I had to take it to him. He has the clout to say yes. Whereas I could only have said no. And would have. And would have. What does the department have to do with this? Uh, not the department. You. And what do I have to do with this? You're a woman in what used to be a man's job. A dangerous job. It's a point of view piece. All I need is to tag along with you for a few days. No, I'm sorry. I couldn't do my job if I had a camera crew hanging on my sleeve. No camera crews. Just me. I shoot all the pictures myself. I know a dozen different ways to do this. It's very unobtrusive, and I wouldn't be with you all the time. Uh, I don't think so, Miss Colson. I really don't have the time for you right now. Plus, as you know, my partner has just been shot. Oh, that's the focus, the shooting. Over the next few days, you and I talk about you and your partner. What happened? How it affects you personally? How it affects the way you both do your jobs? Nice to have met you, Miss Colson. Lou, you can't buck the deputy chief. He's already approved the idea. Uh, Lieutenant, maybe, uh, maybe we can work something out. As long as I get to call the shots. You do not show me or my partner's face on television. You only shoot when and where I tell you you can. And as soon as we disagree, I get to pull the plug. You've got a deal. OK. That's terrific. Terrific. OK, thank you, officer. Hello, Sergeant. Hello. So who's your um, visitor? Jennifer Colson, meet Detective Galbraith. Oh, TV reporter. <laughs> I've heard of you. That right? Two years ago, Dade County, Chucky Fritz. He did a job on him. Cut him off at the knees. He's a crooked cop. He deserved it. Well, from what I understand, he gave you a present that wasn't exactly gift-wrapped. I think maybe you were getting even with him. Looks like he got even with me. He got me fired. He's still on the patent day, County, and I'm stuck out here in Palm Beach with you. Rudy, I need the physical evidence from the Jack Moran shooting. 
Well, you know I can't do that. Not before I make my recommendations to the shooting review board. And while I wait for you, everything gets cold. Yeah, you can wait. Whatever is there is whatever is there. It won't get cold. And with me holding on to it, it won't disappear. Mm. Okay. I don't have much, but what I do have is casings from Lorenzo's 9mm. Cigarette butts on the windowsill, a roll of dough and wallet, and Lorenzo's card in this pocket. Really? That's it. You keep quiet about where you heard about this. All right. Thanks, Rudy. Come on, lady. What's up? Chris, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at home resting. I wanted to come in and write down everything I can remember about last night before I forget it. I'm Chris Lorenzo. Hi, Jennifer Colson. Nice to meet you. The reporter. That's right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You get anything? Yeah, yeah. I ran Karen Daniels. She has no record, no nothing. Then I ran the tags on the BMW, and the registered owner is former state senator Fletcher Stanton. Yeah. So, um, who's who, Sergeant? I'm Detective Lance, sir. It's nice to meet you. Thank uh, you. Detective Lorenzo, sir. Nice All to right. meet you. Another detective? No, she is an observer. Trainee? Something like that. Huh. Actually, Miss Colson is a television reporter. She's going to oh. be on a ride along with us for a couple days, sir. Well, glad to have you with us, Miss Colson. I'll watch what I say. <laughs> you look like a kid in a candy store, Sergeant Lorenzo. Well, I feel like a kid in a candy store, sir. You have beautiful surroundings. Cop with a good sense of humor. We have a wedding here next week. Uh, most of these young ladies are here for that. A wedding, Senator? Oh, no, no, not me. It's. My youngest daughter, Alicia. She's marrying my good friend, Judge Marcus Bolin. Marcus Bolin? You know, I thought I knew all the judges in Palm Beach. Never heard of him. He's on the bench in Dade County. But he's giving that up, and he's moving up here and opening a law practice. Good for him. So, what can I do for you? Senator, do you, uh, do you own a white BMW, the license plate NS361B? We've got a Beamer. I'm not sure of the plate. Was anyone driving it around 1 o'clock this morning? Well, you overestimate me, Sergeant Lorenzo. I mean, I haven't seen 1 o'clock in the morning in 20 years. <laughs> Could have been anybody. I don't know. Uh, it would be a man. Uh, early 40s, about 6 foot, medium build. I don't know, but I'll be glad to check into it. Good. That'd be great. Um, do you think we could look the car over, sir? Well, sure. Wesley, could you come here a minute? What happened to your arm, Sergeant Lorenzo? Uh, accident. The man driving my car last night have anything to do with that accident? No, sir. Wesley, would you take these folks out to the garage? They want to have a look at one of the cars. Sure. Officers Lance, Lorenzo, uh, Miss Colson. Uh, uh, Senator, if you don't mind, I'll just stay and chat with you for a few minutes. I've seen a car before. Right. Thank you, sir. You're Thank welcome. You, Here it is. Right. Is anyone driving the car today? Oh, yes. Everyone uses the Beamer. Mm. Judge Boland's been using it just this morning to take stuff to his new office. Don't forget about the fingerprints. So, the judge lives here, huh? For the last few months, and until the wedding. Actually, he's been like part of the family for years. What is it you're looking for? Well, there was an incident on Beach Boulevard last night. We think this car might have been involved. I don't know. I don't think so. Why not? Well, there was a party. All of our people were here. This man was six foot, medium build, about 40 years old. It was a big party. What happened to your arm? Got shot. You think someone in our car had something to do with it? No, somebody else. Did you catch him? Yeah. Well, what happens to somebody who shoots a cop? He's dead. Damn cops. You always had it in for Jack. I mean, he wasn't no angel, but he wasn't so bad either. Miss Lee, do you mind if we look around a little bit? No, I don't care. But if you find some reason that you had to shoot Jack, I want to see it. What kind of work did Jack do, Dora? He did night work. Night work? Jennifer. 
Look, he did whatever he could get to do, and a lot of it was at night. I never did ask a lot. Was he here last night? Yeah. Till around 1.30. And then the phone rang, and he talked for a while and left. That was the last time I saw him. Did he say anything to you? No, he just made up some instant and he smoked a couple joints. Do you mind if I take this with us? Before. I'll make sure that it gets back to you. <gasps> no, I, I don't care. What difference does it make? Thanks, Dora. This is Jennifer Coulson reporting for WPKV News. What do former Senator Fletcher stand? A dead gangster named Jack Moran and a Palm Beach homicide detective have in that? common? That's what we'll be finding out as police follow a confusing trail of clues while they try to unravel the attempted murder last night of Detective Chris Lorenzo each night this week on WPKV oh, 6 no. o'clock news. Damn it, Marcus, you're not listening to me. Again, you're not listening to me. You don't seem to be able to keep your fly or your mouth shut. Fletcher, you're overreacting. I told you to not get involved with Karen Daniels to begin with, but you wouldn't listen. And not only that, you've told her enough about our business to compromise us both. And she tried to do just that. Karen's gone. She's not a problem. I took care of it. You took care of it. How many times have I heard that, Marcus, huh? Too damn many. If it weren't for my daughter, I'd bring this partnership to an end. No, Fletcher. It's too ingrown for that. If you try and cut me loose, you'll bleed to death in the process. All right. So we've got Karen in the senator's car, and now we have Jack Moran in the same car. So, unless the note was from somebody else, Moran handed it off, they dropped it in the car. For now, let's just say he didn't handle it. That doesn't sound too good for Karen. You know, this looks like it could be part of a street address. 355, that could be street numbers. But the word C-O-R-M, it's maybe short for a street name. Detectives! Yeah. How about some mail? Why, hi, Jennifer, our favorite reporter. We got chewed out. Royally chewed out because of your stunt on the news. Guys, you did not get censorship when we went into this thing. No, but I did get pull the plug, which is exactly what I am doing. Really? Really. Don't be too quick. Why not? Him. Who? That's the guy that was in the car with Karen. Meet Judge Marcus Bolin, future son-in-law and longtime political protege of Fletcher Stan. This was in Miami, like three years ago. I was just cutting my teeth in the news department. Bolin's first marriage was coming unraveled. At first, rumors of another woman. Was her name Karen? Name never came out. Fletcher Stanton's people dried up every scrap of publicity like it wasn't happening. When I heard Bolin's name and your description today back to back, magic. What's the connection between Bolin and Stanton? Oh, I asked my friend in Miami, the one who faxed me Bolin's picture. Nine or 10 years ago, Bolin was an assistant DA in South Day prosecuting a case against one of Stanton's companies, a toxic waste thing. A dead bang conviction was thrown out for lack of evidence. Sounds like the start of a beautiful relationship. You've got it. Bolin was a sitting judge in less than a year. So when Bolin scratches, Stanton smiles and vice versa. Mm, politics as usual. Now, if Bolin's description rang a bell for you, you know it had to ring a bell for the senator as well. I think it's time that we talk with the judge. Yeah, so do I. But I'd like to get him away from Camelot South, out from underneath the senator's wing. What do you think? New office? Yeah, yeah, I'll see if I can get the address. Smells like a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Huh. Help yourself, Lieutenant. Help yourself. Just dispatch units to a 911 in Jack mm -hmm. Moran's. Call her said Dora Lee is on the roof, threatening to jump. Said she might be hopped up or drunk. Maybe both. Be careful. All Thanks, right. Lieutenant. Well, I want you to stay way back. In a situation like this, there's no tell what makes him jump. Not a player, Sergeant. Just, just remember that when we get upstairs, yes, Jennifer. Ma'am, you got to step back from there. Ma'am? Get away from me. It's OK. I'll stay right here. Can you, can you do me a favor? I'm afraid to hide. Can you step back for me? What's your name? Dora. All right. Hey, Chris, wait. why don't you talk to her? I'll try to get close. No, no, no. Hold on a second. You talk to her. I'm going to sneak No, listen. Back. You're hurt. You're not going to be able to hold her. 
Now, you will probably be able to keep her attention longer because she knows that you are the cop that shot Moran. All right, all right. You go that way. Okay. Don't you move. Yes, sir. Take a step back. Dora! Hey, you remember me? Stay away from me. Now leave me alone. Okay. I okay. All right. We'll just all relax, take it easy. Everything's gonna be okay. You know, I bet Jack wouldn't want you up here like this. You think about that? But I, I killed Jack. <laughs> No, you didn't kill Jack. Dora, some... Hey, hey, Dora! Look, somebody else is responsible for that, not you. God, I'm so sorry. He lied to me. Everybody lied to me. Dora! Dora! No! <laughs> oh. You can't blame yourself for what happened to Jack. It's not your fault. He lied to me. He told me that it was a surprise for a buddy of his. I didn't know. He told me that that cop was a friend of his. I didn't know. Wait, Dor, you knew that Jack was meeting a cop? Yeah. Jack would do crazy stuff like that sometimes. He woke me up. It was the middle of the night. All I wanted to do was go back to sleep, so I did what he said. I said that my name was Karen Daniels. Hold on a second, Dora. You, you made one call. Yeah. I, I thought it was a joke. I didn't know anyone was going to get hurt. I didn't know Jack was going to get killed. Thanks. Judge Boland wasn't expected at his new office until mid-morning, so we went back to the Excelsior. Find anything in here? No, just some cigarette butts on the windowsill. Cigarette butts. Seven smokes. So if we smoked them all in a row, we're talking 30, 40 minutes, all right? Right. Windows not busted. Rudy find a room key? No. Somebody let him in. Maybe somebody with a master key. You should go talk to the manager. Police officers! Police officers, open the door! Yeah, yeah, yeah! What do you want? What's going on here? What? Nothing. Collecting her rent. He hitting you? No, I hit him. He likes it. Hey, y'all get out of here. You ain't got no right. You got a warrant here. Hey! You don't move. You all right? <sighs> Dicks. All right, Mr. Dix, you listen to me. You're going to calm down, and you're going to answer a couple of questions. You got it? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sit down on the bed. <coughs> you OK, baby? Yeah, yeah. Now, you know what happened here yesterday morning? Yeah, I heard. You know Jack Moran? How did he get into room 200? Hey, I let him in. Why? <laughs> he slipped me a 20, all right? Hey, but I had no idea it was... Yeah, right. Was anybody with him? I didn't see but Moran. Who owns this place? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Some company with initials for a name. S&B Incorporated. You got an address? Nah. Nah, they pay their bills from someplace south of here. In the islands. S&B as in... Stanton and Bowling. Karen and I had been involved for some time ever since my first marriage. When my engagement to Alicia Stanton was recently announced, Karen became unreasonable. She followed me here to Palm Beach. I was trying to end it gently, but she just went off and got out of hand. That's when you saw us. Where is she, Judge? I'd like to see her. I don't know. I haven't seen her since that night. I got a call from Karen later that night. She sounded scared. Well, you've got to realize that Karen is emotionally and mentally unstable. I got another call that night that sent me to a place where a man shot and tried to kill me. Now, I'd given Karen a card exactly like this. We found a card exactly like this on the dead guy. I think it was the same card. What do you want from me? I want to talk to Karen. 
Right, in person, not over the phone. I want to make sure she's okay, and I want to find out who set me up. I already told you. I don't know where she is. I don't appreciate having my name dragged into something. All right, Sergeant. I suppose I could talk to some mutual friends and see what I could find out. That'd be good, Judge. The sooner the better. You let me know. Mm-hmm. Well, it could be wrapped into a holding company, you know, like an umbrella. I'm pretty sure it's Offshore Company. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, the fictitious name is S&B Incorporated. You'll find Stanton and Bolin listed as officers, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, also, I have a piece of a word. C-O-R-M. I think that could be another piece of the puzzle. Uh-huh. All right. Thanks a lot, Brad. I thought that we were going to be out on the streets, busting bad guys. Hmm. Don't you hate doing this stuff? No, Jennifer, I don't. Actually, it has its brighter side. I mean, I'm a lot less likely to have a brick heaved at me doing this kind of stuff. Well, I won't be a blip in the ratings with this. So what are you doing? I am trying to follow a thread. I'm trying to find the owners of the hotel. See, I don't get a listing for S&B locally, so it's probably folded in with other companies. I am hoping that the State Commerce Department computer will spit out something that will give me a local address. Which gives you? Who knows? But the same players keep cropping up, so when that's all you've got, you keep turning over the rocks. It's very exciting. This cop's not going away. Maybe he takes getting shot kind of personal. He wants me to find Karen and take her to him. I think you should do it. You could still maybe solve this little problem before it gets totally out of hand. What do you think Fletcher will say? He'd say it's an opportunity. So if you strip everything else away, Moran was hired to kill you because you saw Karen with the judge, you can tie the two of them together. Which shouldn't be too difficult unless Karen turns up dead. Which would mean a lot of questions for the judge. So at present, we got Moran, Bolin, and Karen all in the same car. Right, but not necessarily at the same time. But we do know that Stanton owned the car, right? And he and Bolin are in business together. Could be dirty. So, the one that it keeps pivoting around, so far as you're concerned, is... Is Karen. Karen. Yeah, Lorenzo. This is Judge Bowen. I found Karen. She's hiding. What from? I have no idea. I told you she was unstable. When can I see her? I can take you to her this afternoon. Yeah, why don't you bring her by here? She won't do that. Well. What time? Worth and Ocean Boulevard. Say, uh, 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes worth an ocean. You got it. So judge wants to take me to see Karen. Testing, testing. Test, test, test. You read me in Detective Lance's car, Cooperman? Got it, good, perfect. Great. Good. Uh, is this thing off? Yeah, it's off. All right, thanks, Wilcox. You know, this Cooperman is such a chump. Did you hear about his wife? She's sleeping with the fire department again. Really? <laughs> See you guys. Your mother, Lorenzo. See you, Wilcox. Cooperman. Oh, you know, Chris, I think we should get back up on this one. No. I don't know which way this thing's gonna go, but I want to give it a chance. All right, look, if it goes south, you can always call back up. Well, you know, these things are only good for a couple of blocks. Now, what if I lose you in traffic? You're not gonna lose me. You're the best the department has. Come on, if you lose me, so would any backup. All right, just remember, this is a one-way wire, right? I hear anything weird, I am coming in, even if that means blowing the setup. Absolutely. Okay. All set? Yeah, Jennifer, but uh, you're gonna sit this one out. No way. Well, Jennifer, we gotta keep this thing low profile. If the judge is on the level, it's the only shot I have of talking to Karen. Look, I brought some things to this party, folks. Yes, Jennifer, you did, but remember, I call the shots. Now, this thing could get very intense. I don't want any distractions. I'll stay out of the way. I said no, end of discussion. 
Remember, I will be in constant contact with Lieutenant Hudson. All right. Don't let him send any black and whites into the area. Give me a couple minutes to get in position before you show up, all right? You got it. Oh, Rudy. You know, I don't have time for any more of your crap this morning. Make time, Sergeant. What is it, Rudy? We're running short here. Bates and I put in our two cents at the review board. Shooting Moran was self-defense. Personally, I would have liked to have seen you busted. But Bates wore me down. You know, Rudy, what is it about me? I love cops. Worst job in the world, but guys stick their face in there and do it without much coming back. So I can't stomach anyone that makes their job worse than it already is. That's bad cops. That's sloppy cops. Now you. You did what I told you not to do. You went to see Moran's old lady. You rousted his pal at the hotel. They talked to you. They figured they don't have to talk to me. Makes my job harder. But the big thing is, Lorenzo, I know it rings your bell. <laughs> Moran's a jacket, evidence bag. They're on your desk. Nothing in there I didn't already tell you about. I'm sure. Congratulations. Yeah, I'd like to. <clears throat> All right, you better get started. Okay. See ya. Bye. Testing, testing. Hello? Hello? How long can you break for dolphins? <laughs> We're leaving now, Lieutenant. Okay, Rita, you keep that mic in your hand. I'll be right there with you. Afternoon, Judge. Where are we headed? Just enjoy the ride, Sergeant. Not very far. One car, light blue, a brunette stripe. Judge, this is three right turns in a row. You driving in circles here? Just being careful. I promise Karen I'd bring you alone. Well, I gotta tell you, this is starting to feel hinky. Maybe we ought to call the whole thing off. You say the word, I'll stop. You can get out anytime you want. He hasn't made me yet, Lieutenant, but uh, he's being really cautious. Rita, okay. If it looks like he's about to make you, you pull him over. Sun is a killer. 
All right, they're headed west, Lieutenant, but I'm starting to lose them. Listen, you've got a description on the car. Put out an APB. Done. Pull it over. Great. Hmm. Flagler Bridge. Flagler Bridge. Oh, they're taking the Flagler Bridge. I'm, I'm headed towards West Palm. We do you just had a call from Brad about SMB Inc. Yeah, yeah. Did he find it? In the West Palm Beach Warehouse District, 355 Gandhi. Company name is Comorant Enterprises. 355 Gorm, I got it, Lieutenant. Listen, I'm gonna need backup. You think that's where they're headed? It's the best bet we've got. Let her go, Judge! It's not gonna happen, Judge. Give it up. Give it up. Put the gun down, Sergeant. Put it down! Over there. Shoot the girl, Marcus. What? No! Look, lady, nobody has to die here. The deal was to bring him here. The Senator was right. You will be the next one to cause us trouble. <laughs> Drop the gun, Wesley! Lose it! <sighs> Hurts, doesn't it, Judge? You have the right to remain silent. So you've got the bad guys and you've got the victims. And you would think that that would be it. Black and white, clear, straight lines. But it's not like that. There is a lot of gray. And that is why it's important to understand people and why they do the things that they do. You can never let your guard down. A cop can become a victim just like anybody else. Like your partner? Yeah, like my partner. So what are your feelings now? with a former judge spilling a story to the grand jury and Fletcher Staten under criminal indictment. Do you get personal satisfaction for knowing you brought that about? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we caught the bad guys, that's what we do. Unfortunately, there are three people dead that we know of. Karen Daniels, Jack Moran, Wesley Parks. My partner almost got killed. Dora Lee tried to kill herself. I mean, that's pretty depressing stuff. I just, I wish it didn't have to happen like that. In a perfect world, maybe. All we can do is try. This is Jennifer Colson. Boo! WPKB. Hey, so weird. <laughs> no, you look good. Mm. Perfect world, huh? Yeah. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Well, not much job security in that. Oh, <laughs> 